We're looking at the definition of thrombosis, and there is a triad in thrombosis uh, known as the V-Charles triad. We'll also be looking at that triad too. All right, that's just after the definition of thrombosis, we look at the V-Charles triad. So this V-Charles triad, you're just trying to look at what? The primary influences on thrombosis formation. What are the three things that will lead to what? A formation of a thrombosis, right? So it's just like us defining thrombosis, then she's talking about how thrombosis are being formed. All right. So this is thrombosis. Thrombosis is basically what? A clotting of blood inside a blood vessel. Normally, blood is just supposed to flow freely and blood should clot only when there's injury. But in thrombosis now, there's now clotting of blood, irregular clotting of blood in the blood vessels and all that, all right? So thrombosis, you said that is an inappropriate activation of the blood clotting pathway in uninjured vasculature. Like the blood vessel is not injured, just like that. Blood clotting just is just happening, okay? So let me see if there's any other image. Yeah, this image actually works. Can you see this a clot? Just, just inappropriate activation, all right? So we said that what? Thrombotic occlusion of a vessel after, or thrombotic of occlusion of a vessel after a relatively minor injury. There's a minor injury that doesn't really want that activation that actually occur. But the activation is too much, all right? It's too much compared to the injury that actually occurred, all right? So we said that now formation of the thrombosis, and that's where the vitreous triad actually comes from. We said that there are three primary influences on the thrombosis formation, all right, so-called. That's a so-called vitreous triad. So three things actually what influence the formation of thrombosis. That's the vitreous triad. So one of it is what endothelial injury. So now this is a dominant factor and can independently cause thrombosis as in endocarditis or ulcerated what atherosclerotic plague, All right? So injury can be due to what hemodynamic stresses as in hypertension or turbulent flow, endotoxin, radiation, or cigarette smoke, right? So the thrombosis result from what? Exposed subendothelial, what? Extracellular matrix. So now there's, maybe there's injury to the endothelial wall and the, the extracellular matrix is ex, exposed, right? So now if it is exposed, there will be increased platelet adhesion. There will be elevated procoagulant production, okay? That's a tissue factor and the plasminogen factor or there will be reduced what anticoagulant activity. So now, if there's endothelial injury, the things that are promoting coagulation will be increased. The thing reducing coagulation will be reduced, all right? So now, coagulation will what? Obviously occur, all right? Then the next cause could be alteration in the normal blood flow. We said that normal blood flow is lamina, okay? As we have cellular element flowing centrally in the blood vessel, right? Separately from the endothelial. Okay, okay. And they are flowing centrally in the vessel lumen, all right? And they are, they are separated from the what? Endothelium. There's a separation. And this separation is what is known as a plasma clairson, all right? So stasis and turbulence with later forming eddy current with lower pocket of stasis will lead to disruption of the normal laminar flow and to bring platelets into contact with the uh, is it blood vessel endothelium, all right? It's supposed to be blood vessel, all right? So that means what? If there is stasis, this separation between the endothelium and the blood vessel can be breached. Now, the blood vessels can now be having a direct contact with the word endothelium, which is not nice to form what? Clotting. So it is also, okay, it also prevents dilution of activated clotting factors by flowing blood, right? So it also retards the inflow of clotting inhibitors and also promotes what? Activation, all right? So stasis causes thrombosis in the venous circulation and cardiac chambers and what? Atrial aneurysm. Stasis is like what? The blood flow is being obstructed. So now there's like a backlog, like the blood is staying in one place for a long time. So now when blood stays in one place for a long time, blood co coagulation or clotting pathway is now activated, right? So this stasis will cause thrombosis, which is what? Inappropriate activation of the clotting pathway, all right? 
Turbulence flow can also cause thrombosis in the arterial circulation as well as what endothelial injury. All right. Hyperviscosity syndromes, um, as in polycythemia or deformed erythrocyte, as in what sickle cell. Right. So all this can result into small vessel stasis and also predisposed to what thrombosis. Then the last cause could be hypercoagulopathy or hypercoagulability. All right. So this is loosely defined as any alteration of the coagulation pathways that are predisposed to thrombosis, right? It can contribute, contribute less frequently to thrombosis, but it's critical, right? So this hypercoagulability, that means what? Coagulation is occurring too fast, hyper, all right? You could have a genetic cause where you are saying what? There's a mutation in factor five, all right? So, um, arginine is substituting what? Sorry, glutamine is now substituting arginine, okay? Which there's a substitution there, all right? So, there's substitution in the amino acid residue. That's the 506, leading to resistance to activated protein C. So, there's factor 5 leading. So, factor 5 gene mutations are the most common what? Mutations. And they occur about 2% to 5% of Caucasians and 60% of patients with what recurrent deep vein thrombosis carry the leading mutation, rendering factor 5 resistant to protein C inactivation. So factor 5 is now resist is now resist is resistant, right? So now coagulation is just occurring just like that, just like that, just like that. So that's it, guys, and bye for now.